Hey guys, welcome back to another review and today we are going to take a look at a rather recent kit from Plum Model instead of Kotobukiya today we got this one from Plum. I think this one came out, I think it was, I want to say February. Did I build this in February? Um, it might have been. It feels like it's been a little while since I built this kit. Just haven't really had the time to get around to doing the full review, but since I'm working from home at the moment, I'm going to be able to knock out a number of reviews for kits that I've built and just they've been sitting around. So here we have, yes, this is from Gradius 4. Would we say Gradius in America? Gradius? Gradius? From Gradius 4. Now this was a an arcade game that was released here in Japan in 1999 I believe it was and they later had a version of this game that was released for the PlayStation 2 as well so you could either play it in the arcade or you could play it in uh, at home on your PlayStation 2 if you bought it for that system back then so yeah, it's uh, based on a game that's 20 years old. I, I seem to be doing a number of kits lately that are based off of video games, come to think of it. So we have here, we have, and this was, oh yeah, so from Gradius 4, this is the Vic Viper, Vic Viper version Gradius 4. Yeah, so I did the Ace Combat, we had that ADF 11 that I did, and we've had the of course, that uh, the Bandai Sega Saturn kits that we had up recently, as well as that PlayStation, which was an actual video game system itself. And then even before that, we had those uh, kits from the Sakura Wars. And actually, there are new kits from Sakura Wars coming out as well in June, or they might have been delayed to July now, I think, actually come to think of it. So yeah, a lot of video game related model kits ha are being released lately it feels like and today is no different so this one also just like that uh ace combat adf 11 that i just reviewed yesterday this one is also going to be in 1 1 44th scale so same scale as a hg gundam kit and this will be the same scale size wise it should be as that adf 11 so we'll pull that kit over here to the side in a second to get a kind of a good size comparison but first let's go ahead and check out what do we get here with this Vic Viper now I gotta admit I'm kind of I'm a fan of the Vic Vipers I really love the look of these Vic Viper type of fighter jets so I thought this one was really really rather cool and, and an exciting release I know plum models they can kind of be sometimes a bit hit or miss on just how well they they go together how well they build and I gotta say for this one I really did not think it was that difficult at all it went together quite easily now I do want to note here that I you actually are going to be required to use glue in a few places because for this Vic Viper there are for the most part I want to say 90% of this kit is a snap together kit but here you have these blue flaps on the on the what would you say the the outer edge of these wings now these were very thin and they actually don't have any kind of pegs on them that will allow you to plug them in so in order to put these on here you are going to need to glue these on so uh you'll use whatever kind of modeling glue that you have around now i ended up using my Mr. Cement S. This is like a tam Tamiya extra thin type of glue. You just put the parts together before you glue it and then you just brush some of the glue on over it once the parts are kind of already connected and it just soaks in between the cracks and sticks together. It's a really really simple glue to use and yeah it doesn't leave any kind of oops doesn't leave any kind of glue marks afterwards so i really love i actually really prefer to use extra thin whenever i can unfortunately that's the type of thing that we cannot ship overseas because unfortunately this thing here you can see it's got that little fire mark this is flammable so they don't let us ship any of these kind of flammable liquid type stuff now that stops us from being able to ship paints and that kind of stuff as well unfortunately however if you have a local hobby shop somewhere around in your neighborhood there's a chance that you can be able to grab some extra thin type of glue from a local hobby shop always always fun to stop by those although during the current situation here they might not be open so 
you might have to use whatever glue you can although super glue would be useful as well if you have some of that just a few small dabs of that all right so enough talk about the gluing the parts that i had to glue on for this thing now this thing was nice i really did appreciate that this kit does have numerous different parts molded in different colors we've got these clear orange pieces for the cockpit as well as kind of these um what would you what would they kind of be whatever these detailed parts here on the sides of the front here as well as the kind of signal light on the edge of the wing those pieces are going to be molded in that clear orange as well i do believe these are also pieces that i no actually i don't think i glued these on yeah they're not glued on so these little tiny tiny orange clear pieces at the edge of the wing here those are not glued on i just push them on but they're really really thin see if you're worried at all about losing those pieces you might want to actually glue them on actually come to think of it i just realized i made a slight mistake i'm not gonna go ahead and fix it now there are two little uh marks post little, little peg marks here actually and i just realized that i forgot God, I didn't realize probably in the manual when it was telling you to do this. But yeah, there are two more of these little orange clear pieces here. And if you look at that box art down here, this tip actually should be orange. So I'm guessing I should have put these little clear orange pieces down here where I'm guessing those are going to be maybe type of a, a, a gun type, a little gun barrel type thing. So maybe I'll get around to doing that later. But for this video, it's not really that important. I do not believe. So yeah, we've got those orange clear plastic pieces. Most of this is going to be molded in a white plastic. And you have these blue kind of accent pieces for the edge of the wing and the tail, as well as over here above the jet intake. And we also have some kind of black plastic here for the leading edge of the wing as well as gray for the for the engine there as well as on the inside here so those the internal parts are going to be in this gray plastic so quite a few different colors around this kit so that is quite nice to see now i did that kotobukiya the 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 ace combat kit and that one was basically i think it had a total of three different colors so c considering that this thing has what was it five different colors on there then that is quite nice they did a really good job this kit also it comes with this display stand as like keeps falling off on me here so yeah it's a rather simple display stand it connects underneath i do i thought i remembered that this one came with a cover piece for the underside of this i want to say all right so yeah this kit has some pretty nice details you got some scribed panel lines running all around the kit and other kind of little details on the inside of the wings there i'm not sure why my i'm holding this sideways so i'm not really sure why those tail pieces keep trying to fly off on me here so yeah other kind of details we got the vents on the upper side here a lot of other kind of scribed in detail there quite quite nice it looks quite good all right so yeah we got these nice uh, kind of vents there with the details on the inside let me make sure i'm getting this on camera here there we go yeah these nice upper vents there overall it's actually was pretty pretty decent kit nothing was too difficult to put together here and let's take a look at the back side so there we can see the jet exhaust as well as not quite exactly sure what they would be but they look quite cool we got these two kind of bomb or they could be fuel type fuel tank type things underneath looks quite cool but yeah this is not as large as the adf 11 that i built the other day as well even though they are in the same scale so there is that so actually let's go ahead and bring on over that ace combat adf 11 from kotobukiya so here we can see the size comparison between these two if i was to just hold them up like this you can kind of see that just how much larger that ADF-11 is compared to the Vic Viper, but kind of cool to see them side by side. Both of them are very futuristic type of spaceship aircraft type designs. Even though technically this Vic Viper would be really, it's a 20 year old design. Now actually, and it's based off of the original Gradius, which is even older than that. So there's no articulation to talk about 
but it's just all molded in yeah you just build it put it together and once you once you've got it all put together then it goes up on your display stand like any other kind of model kit so there's that. I do not believe there is any kind of water slide decals or anything with that kit, with this kit either. So really, that's all there is to talk about with this thing. That pretty much wraps it up. I guess, yeah, I can't remember anything else that I really wanted to mention about this thing. All right, thank you very much for watching. Oh, this thing is still available for order on our site, HobbyLinkJapanHLJ.com. So if you are a fan of Gradius, or a fan of Vic Vipers and you would like to put one of these cool looking things together to keep on your desk then go ahead and check out our site and get your order. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again soon with a new review. Yeah.